This is Democracy Watch. So, Mark, we have caught the RNC, the Republican National Committee, in some lies. Uh, talk about what you guys just got your hands on and why the RNC has been lying about it. Okay, so first of all, I know everyone's shocked that the RNC lies. <laughs> but what a weird lie to tell. I mean, like, I've, you know, the RNC lies about just about everything. Um, but they have this particular fixation, for whatever reason, in lying about the number of voter suppression lawsuits they are involved in. Now, you might think that they would be ashamed of trumpeting that they are trying to make voting harder, but it's part of their brand. And they have been telling this lie over and over again. And it's really, it started to catch my attention because, you know, Ronna McDaniel was running around saying that we have 78, the RNC has 78 cases in court. And I'm like, there's no chance they have 78 cases in court. Like I, I follow every case in court and I'd know if there were 78. Um, <laughs> yeah. And But that was the lie they have been to telling everyone that they are 78 cases in 23 states. And Democracy Docket, which had been independently tracking this, right? Because the Democracy Docket tracks, uh, it has tracked more than 700 cases. It, it's tracking every case. So it already knew that the number 78 wasn't correct, but then it got its hands on and what seems to be largely an internal document of the RNC, although who knows how they use it, in which they talk about the cases they are involved in and the states they're involved in, and they don't actually list 78 cases. Yeah. Well, what advantage do they derive by inflating their involvement in lawsuits? Like, is it just to, to placate Trump? Because it would seem like actually litigating more cases, not just lying about it, would probably serve Donald Trump better. So this is why I'm saying, you know, Brian, it's so weird. Right. Like you're going on Meet the Press. You're the, you're like it's your first day as a contributor, Ronald McDaniel. And you go on. And one of the first things you say is we're involved in 78 cases when that's not true. Like, why start with that? Right. you got a lot of you got a lot of water to, to cover and a lot of yeah. luggage to bear. Why start with that? But I think you put your finger on the why. Right. The why is because Donald Trump fired Ronna McDaniel because he wanted them to bring more voter suppression litigation. Yeah, so but, what I said, wouldn't it be worse for, for so Ronna McDaniel didn't do it. So now isn't it worse that these people are still not doing it, but now lying to him about it. But I think that this is the, they figure their way out because Donald Trump is not going to actually read, <laughs> you know, he's not going <laughs> right. to, he's not going to dig into the pleadings. Yeah. So I think that like, like they figure, Oh, if we tell, the world we're involved in 78 cases, Donald Trump will be like, oh, look, they're involved in 78 cases. Well, That's hold on, I'm hold on, Mark. You don't think Donald Trump is pouring over the, the case logs uh, that the RNC has going on right now? No, because they also keep <laughs> losing cases, right? Like, like no one's telling him not only are you not involved in these cases, but you're losing these cases. <laughs> yeah. So it's I think that that's why they're doing it, because it can't be to raise money, because I can't imagine that a bunch of RNC donors are like, oh, let us give more money for lawyers. Yeah. Like, right, like, like, let us give more money for litigation, right? Normally, donors want to give money for like television commercials or get out the vote. And, and it's such a, it's such a strange thing already in the Trump world, how much money they spend on lawyers, for example, his own yeah. lawyers, um, that I just have to think it's to placate Trump. Well, the good news about this is that with all the money that they're saving on not actually litigating their cases, they, that's more money that can go to Laura Trump and her music career. So, uh, so there is and a I think they ought to spend it all this. on the music career. Look, I, I am on record. I think that they ought to take all of the RNC's money. They ought to pay Donald Trump's legal bills. They ought to buy, you know, they ought to like buy her a recording studio so that she can record more music. And yeah. then they ought to, then they ought to like, you know, they ought to buy all of her, all, all of the music. That's like, it. Just we're, don't spend it on don't spend it on voters. Don't spend any of it on voters. We're here on record right now, uh, uh, advocating for Laura Trump's music career as as hard as anybody on the right possibly could. So let 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 that be known. See, there's some there's some bipartisanship here. Mark, is the fact that they have to lie about this kind of a tacit admission that these cases aren't actually winnable for them? Because if they were, they would actually litigate them in real life instead of just lying about it. Yeah, well, that's a, kind of like another like sidelight to all of this. If you look at not only that they're not litigating as many cases, they say the cases, the kind of cases they say they're bringing, like they're like, we're, we're litigating ID cases. They're actually not litigating many voter ID cases. Like they want to project a reality that is not true because they can't win the cases that they, that they have promised. They have promised their base that they are going to over, you know, bring lawsuits to overturn fraud. Well, there was no fraud. I mean, every time they bring in a case about fraud, they lose and they get sanctioned, right? Yeah. So, so they are left trying to pump up their base 
um, uh, with, uh, you know, the, uh, on something that they can't actually make good on. What lawsuits are they engaged in right now that actually do worry you? So this is the irony. The irony is that Democracy Docket actually put out a report at the end of the year saying the RNC is actually litigating more cases than they have historically have. I have publicly said, hey, everyone, we need to take seriously the fact that the RNC is litigating all of these cases. It's just not as many. It's like everything else about Trump. Like they just take it to like this absurd right. thing that isn't true. But the truth is that the RNC is bringing litigation to purge voters. And we ought to be worried about that. The RNC is bringing litigation in Arizona to undo the election procedure manual, which is the manual that election officials use to literally conduct elections. We ought to be worried about that. The RNC is litigating to strike down laws that allow ballots that were cast before election day, but due to slow mail, uh, come in afterwards. Um, they are th That is litigation we actually ought to be worried about. So the RNC has is like in this odd place in which they actually are bringing more litigation than they historically have. They're bringing some litigation that I think we have to pay attention to. It's just not the stuff that I guess Donald Trump wants to hear spewed on TV about. Right. They just don't know how to do anything without further lying. <laughs> like that's at the end of the day, they just need to lie about something, even when it's when it is along the lines of what they're doing anyway. Um, you had mentioned Democracy Docket. For those watching right now, if you want to follow along with everything that's being uh, that's being reported in Democracy Docket, I'll put the link right here on the screen and also in the post description of this video. It's an excellent resource that I use on a daily basis. Mark, did Democrats have the resources to bat back the lawsuits that Republicans are bringing, whether it is the RNC or outside groups? Look, I hope so. I mean, the fact is, you know, my my team and I, we litigate dozens and dozens of cases um, through my law firm, you know, representing various um, nonprofit and voters and other other organizations. You know, the DNC and and the other uh, Democratic committees uh, litigate where 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 they can. But there's no question we are seeing if you take collectively, not just the RNC, but the RNC and their allies, we are seeing an onslaught of litigation, which, like I said, is part of why it's so odd that the RNC made up the numbers they did. There is a vast um, uh, uh, network, a uh, constellation of right wing organizations that are extremely well funded. Stephen Miller runs one of them. Bill Barr is involved with one of them. You know, these are very well funded and some of them quite sophisticated in their legal tactics. And we are doing everything we can. I, I am with my team and I know that others are. Um, but whether whether we're going to have the, the, the resources, the personnel uh, to both fight back against the litigation they're bringing, right, essentially defending state laws and practices from attack, while also being able to bring the litigation that, that we need to to protect voters, I think is going to be one of the storylines as we approach the 2024 elections. Right now, we're in court in a lot of places. Um, but, you know, how big this wave of anti-voter sentiment is, how big this wave of voter suppression is on the other side, I don't know that we've seen the, the end of it. And you had mentioned, uh, let's finish off with this, you'd mentioned that this was a, a really well-funded apparatus on the right. They largely lose these cases, even though there are some cases that go through. But where does the money actually come from? Because, you know, these cases aren't aren't cheap to litigate. And I mean, Donald Trump himself isn't raising nearly as much money as he used to. The RNC isn't bringing in as much money as it used to. But somebody has to pay all of these lawyers to go into court, even if most of them end up losing. So where does this where does this funding go? And and is there any hope that the funding will run out, given how unsuccessful most of these cases are? Yeah. So a really good question where the money comes from. So some of it is is coming from the Republican Party. The RNC is raising money and, and, and that's part of it. But, you know, let's not forget that the Leonard Leos of the world, they have spent, you know, a decade or more building a network of donors who care about courts, yeah. care about uh, laws. You know, the whole ALEC network, for those out there not familiar, this is the Leg uh, uh, American Legislative Exchange Council. They 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 sponsor state level bad laws, not, not, not necessarily even election laws, just conservative anti-consumer laws from state to state. The other side is invested for years and years in the legal process and the legislative process. You know, the state of Georgia, I wrote a piece for Democracy Docket um, about the latest gambit in Georgia for them to pass a new law allowing to make voter challenges easier, if you could imagine 
if there's one thing Georgia needs, it's not that. Um, they've invested a lot of energy in this and a lot of money. So I think they have a large donor base who is very, very motivated by the courts, very, very motivated to, frankly, get their money's worth for what they spent in the various judicial fights uh, by seeing these uh, these anti-voter laws and anti-voter litigation go forward. Republicans want to make it harder to vote and easier to cheat. And that is their plan for 2024. And the courts play a big role in that. Yeah. And I think uh, for those watching right now, for, you know, for all of the Republicans who are investing in this top down massive um, campaign to to, you know, fight democracy uh, on every front, we've got Mark and, and folks like him, folks at at ELG and all of these other pro democracy firms who are fighting back. So, again, to show your support for the work that they do, uh, please sign up for Democracy Docket. I'll put the link on this screen and also in the post description of this video. I'm Brian Teller Cohen. And I'm Mark Elias. This is Democracy Watch. Democracy Watch.